Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our presentation. We're going to help you guys thrive through shifting and chaotic times uh, that we are dealing with here in our real estate industry. And I wanted to welcome you to our latest webinar, and that is Change Your Message, Change Your Business. My name is W. Kevin Weber. I'm the director of Brivity, and uh, Bob Stewart is not able to join us today, but we do have these two amazing uh, panelists on. Uh, on the line here, and you all should be able to see them on video as well. Uh, and I want you all to welcome uh, Megan and David uh, to the call. And uh, while uh, Megan and David are going to introduce themselves, I'm going to ask that you all do me a favor and just let me know that you can, in fact, hear audio loud and clear. And you can do that by letting us know where you're calling from. We'd love to hear about uh, where you guys are calling from, your locale, your location. And Megan, you're first on the panel uh, screen. Right. Let, let's, let's start with you. Tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're from, and uh, just a real quick, um, uh, just a thought of, like, of why you're here and what you're gonna help these people take away today. Sure. Um, so I am Megan Molden. I'm right outside of the Raleigh area in North Carolina. I'm in Wake Forest. Um, I have been in real estate for the last five years. Most of that time was spent as the transaction coordinator, executive assistant, and or director of operations for Keller Williams teams. And I have recently become the director of training for Your Realty Leverage. So I will take any new hire through their first 90 days with an agent or a team and help train them to success. So I get to see this from two completely different viewpoints and it's just been really interesting to see how we're all um, shifting and pivoting right now. How exciting and just to confirm that you can help pretty much any brand any brokerage uh, with onboarding is that right? Yep. Cool all right next on the list is David Lewis how are you David? Hey what's up guys yeah David Lewis um, in Atlanta Georgia um, I run a team of about 15 agents, uh, 15 rock star, amazing agents that are really uh, putting in the work right now to get everything done in this uh, shifting market, right? Um, we've been about we've been in existence for about six years, and uh, last year we closed 289 units for about 79 million dollars in sales volume. Goodness, great! That's awesome. Well, I yeah, that's awesome. Congratulations on that. And, you know, the, here's the thing is we have uh, a team that we're going to be able to learn from, and that's David. He's been running teams. Uh, Megan has been an agent herself, and she's on the admin side. So I find this to be a really great panel because we're going to be able to see it from all sides. A lot of times the messages that we're sending don't necessarily come directly from us as the agent. A lot of time those messages can be crafted by the admins, by the owners, um, and then delivered. Would you all would you all agree with that? Absolutely. Yeah. 100%. So, yeah. And as an individual agent myself, I'm also a real estate agent. And uh, as an individual agent myself, I manage all of my own communication. I manage everything that comes in. So I'm the uh, as as Ben Kenny says, I'm the janitor uh, and the CEO. So I do everything. So this is really going to help me as an individual agent. And if you're on a team. We're also going to help you guys make sure that you get the right messages um, out as well. All right, now let's know if you guys have any questions over what um, is going to be expectation today. I'd love for you guys to tell me what you're going to expect us to do for you. And we have some promises that we have to also oblige by. So I'm going to tell you what my promise is, and then I'm going to have Megan and David give you uh, some quick promises that they may have. And my promise is, hopefully I'm fulfilling that now, I found two rock star uh, panelists, two people that are going to be able to help us understand the right messages to send today. So I, hopefully I've done my part in bringing you this talent. And I'm also going to promise you guys this uh, webinar is going to be filled with a lot of energy, excitement, and we're going to have fun. So please buckle your seats in. Uh, Megan, do you have a promise that you can share with the audience? Yeah, um, I promise honesty and transparency. Um, mm -hmm. I think that's really important right now. Um, that was an interesting question. Put me on the spot, David. You're lucky you have a couple extra seconds to think about that. <laughs> but yeah, I, I promise honesty and transparency. Well, I'm going to tell you both this is not scripted. Probably yeah. that out. I promise not too many. I promise not many more sizes. How's that sound? <laughs> All good. <laughs> and David, tell me what your. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, I 
My promise is to give you guys a full look into our business and what we're doing, uh, the struggles that we're having, the wins that we're having, and you know the opportunities that we're seeing in the market right now in these pretty strange times. Yeah. Yeah, I like what you said, David, because you said uh, these are things that we are struggling with. I don't know if we've ever experienced time in, in real estate that every is experiencing the same type of market, right? I mean, we all have the same struggles. In fact, we don't even know what uh, the market is doing. We market may be doing very well in some places, maybe not so well in others. However, I feel like the things that we have to do, we all have to do together. We all have to figure out these new uh, strategies and ways of uh, become uh, better uh, at this business, virtually, uh, personally, uh, you know, directly. So. Thank you all for, for those promises. Appreciate it. Now, I'm putting you all your promise is to take two or three things away from this conversation. And I'd love for you all to share those things with us so that we know our time was well spent um, and that we can make sure that we are moving forward with a plan um, after this is done. There's uh, no reason to, to take a lesson if you're not leaving with a plan. So please tell me when we're about done with this, what your two or three things that you took away from today's call. All right, here's what we are gonna talk about right now. Um, and these, uh, these are the things we're gonna cover in today's session. And we're gonna um, talk about when is the right time uh, to connect because there are times to connect and there may not be times to connect. And we're gonna ask our experts about that. We're going to ask what your messages should say. The, the messages that we're sending to people uh, is vital in, in today's business. It's always been vital, I feel like, but we need to make sure that we are saying the right thing because I feel like things could have been can be said different than they ever were before. We're going to help you reestablish old connections because the messages that you're saying um, and you're saying it at the right time are, is going to help reconnect your uh, sphere and your, your people. Um, and then how to make new connections. This is something I know a lot of real estate agents are struggling with, and that would be those things that uh, are that they can do today to make sure that they have uh, connections with additional people so they continue to fill up their funnel uh, and add to their sphere. And then lastly, we're going to give you some ideas on how to uh, connect. So let me know if you have any questions over what is on today's agenda. Uh, Megan, David, do you have any input on what we have on the agenda for now? No, I think it's great. I think it's a really good blueprint to, I mean, for any type of success and building something right now and not just surviving, maybe a little bit of thriving too. I love that. I love that. Not not just, did you say not just arriving, but thriving? Surviving. Not just surviving. Okay. Surviving this now, time, but thriving during this time period. Love that. And I'm going to add to that. You need to arrive so that you can thrive, right? So that's what we're doing. We're helping people arrive to this thing. And and David, you just helped me uh, blow my own mind. Thank you for that. <laughs> okay. Let's talk about when is the right time uh, to connect. Now, w when I ask this question, uh, I, I'm asking is, is, is now the right time? I mean, it, it is now the right time to start to reach out to people um, and and start asking them about real estate. I mean, is now uh, the right time to connect with people and, and, and ask how they're doing? Can you uh, tell me a little bit about how you guys are, are handling that um, together? David, do you want to handle that one first? Sure. Go ahead, David. Well, so the right time to connect was three weeks ago, right? But the, the next best time, the right time to connect is right now um, because you know, and I'll, I'll probably revisit this concept a couple of times, is that conversations in real estate drive everything, right? The ability yeah. to have a two-way conversation with someone to connect and have the opportunity to bring something of value and to ask what you can do for them and ask what you can do for someone that they know is what drives the ability to build a big business in real estate. So this definitely the time to connect. Um, you know, if you have current clients and people that are working, um, we're currently working with you to, you know, buy, sell, or invest in real estate, then 1,000%, like, you need to meet them where they are, and they're concerned. They might not be, like, um, you know, on the if there's, a, if there's a spectrum of concern, they might not be a 12 out of 10, right? But they're at least a 3 out of 10. Everyone has some level of concern, and you need to be meeting them with uh, 
with information, right? Not opinions. And you need to be meeting them with confidence about the plan that you have to help them accomplish the goals that you agreed that you were going to help them accomplish. You said um, you said meet them where they are. That, that's a great question. Can you give me maybe some ways that you all have discovered that to find out where they are so that you could you could continue with that conversation? Well, it's a it's a pretty mind blowing script, right? It's the you know how are you question mark right? Like, <laughs> Wait, hold on, I'm gonna write that down. How are you right yeah. question mark? Got it. How are you? How are these events affecting you and your family? Right. If they're a current client, asking pretty specifically, what are you worried about? What concerns you about this? And, and, you and when you say that, exactly where they are and like meaning that what their level is, um, you know, a lot of times I think we make the mistake of uh, assuming that people want our opinions. And it doesn't matter what how I feel about the situation. It doesn't matter how I feel like about people's reaction to the situation, but it matters where they are because we have a fiduciary responsibility to those people. Speaking of our clients, right? Because um, we're not really talking about the community, the greater community at this point, but our clients specifically, we have a fiduciary responsibility to help them accomplish the goals that we agreed to help them accomplish. And we have to know yeah. what about that has changed so we can address it directly. And, and, and let them know with confidence that you know we have a plan. Uh, the mantra that we've been using on our team is same results, different process. Our our focus on helping you accomplish getting into a bigger house for you and your family or getting into a new school district or helping you relocate to another state, that hasn't changed for us. It's our it's our sole focus. What I want you to know is we have a plan in place to make sure that no matter what, how you however worried about the situation you are, that we're going to accomplish it for you. That's that's what I mean by meeting them where they are, addressing their concerns exactly when they have them and, and not waiting for them to, you know, as a, as a rule of marketing is if, you know, or a, a customer service, if, if they bring you their responses or if they bring you their issues or their problems, like you failed, you're too late. We should be addressing it head on. So yeah. right now. Yeah. David, I love what you said too about, um, bringing facts versus opinions. I've, I've seen a lot of agents recently, um, you know, everything's going to be fine or the world's ending, you know, every, every side of the spectrum and in between. And I think right now it really is important no matter whether we're talking to current clients, prospects, past, you know, whatever that might be to stick to the facts because opinions are not going to be what people are really looking for. Right. And also I think that's a great point. Right. And, and also, too, that, you know, they're not worried about what I think. They're worried about accomplishing their goals. They're worried about their family's health. They're worried about safety. They're worried about the market. Um, I know we're going to get into it later, but, you know, there's a lot of thought we should put into our into our messaging that we're sending and the things that we're saying. But, you know, in regards to the right time to connect, it's right now. And you should just be simply asking, how are you? How's this affecting you? What can I do for you? Yeah, I, I think that's vital. You know, we're all talking a lot about uh, people that we want to work with, people that we uh, might work with, and not a lot of people talking about the people that we are currently working with. So you just you said that your clients, we need to first let them know, like immediately, it's going to be okay. Here's my plan moving forward. Not just sitting waiting for them. And and what I heard you say that if if they end up calling you and saying, listen, uh, David, I'm really worried about the sale of my home or, or purchase of home, then you may be a bit too late. That conversation should have already happened. Yeah, exactly. Love that. Okay, super. All right, uh, that's so powerful. Thank you for that. All right, so now we're gonna say then, let, let's say we connect. Oh, you told us a little bit about what you could say to a client, to someone you uh, are actively working with. Let's talk about some of those messages that we might be relaying to people uh, on a daily basis, weekly basis, monthly, maybe our touches. What are those messages saying, and and how do we uh, how do how do we craft those? Yeah, 
Um, I think it's important that we're continuing again, just like David just said, to give facts instead of opinions. Um, we have that information with our local MLS. We can tell people um, what has happened in the last week or the last month. What do, what do the trends look like? Are we still selling homes? Are there still showings happening? Does it make any difference is a, if a house is occupied or if it's vacant? We have facts that we can share, and I think that's important. Um, but the message, again, David said, how are you? Right now, it's more important than probably ever to truly care what they say when we ask that question. You have to anticipate that they might need something from you when you say, how can I help? Someone said the other day that um, they said, can you go get my prescription? Are you prepared to pick up someone's prescription? You know, you don't know what's coming on the other side of this phone call. So if you're going to call and say, how can I help and what can I do for you? It's important that you're prepared to help and do for them. Yeah, you know, I've seen a lot of agents uh, to, to that, Megan, um, say that if you're going to send out 100 uh, messenger messages, you better be ready to answer 97 messenger messages. So that's telling me that you might want to stay away from a copy paste situation. One, because it's probably not as personalized as it could be if it's a copy paste situation. And two, you need to be prepared to answer right away. Because if you're asking someone how they're doing and they answer right away and you don't respond, that's got to be kind of rough. Right. And people are home right now. They're picking up the phone. So I urge people, um, if you're someone who does almost always email or text because you can't get people on, on the phone or you shy away from it, now's the time to do that, to make those um, maybe not face to face, but true voice to voice connections take advantage of the situation that we're in where most people are home and you're probably going to get them. Make that phone call. Do something a little bit different than maybe you're used to doing. Yeah. David, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I think there's, um. so, you know, we should be very aware of the messages that we send, right? And there's a couple of different, like, formats for that, right? Like, so social media is an amazing format. And, like, it, a little bit later, I'll talk kind of about what our team is doing to next level, like, the social media aspects of it. But in generally speaking, there's a lot of people online right now. There's a lot of people, right? And there's a lot of, um, you know, I think you have to ask, like, how are people viewing me, right? Are we comedians? Or are we professionals, right? And you have to remember, people receive your messages differently, right? Um, everyone loves a good meme or a good joke, you know, but, uh, you know, in this time where the situation is escalating and things are getting a lot more serious, you know, uh, a coronavirus meme is a lot funnier to somebody one day and it'll have a lot different impact on them. Like, so personally, like, you know, I have a great aunt who's in the hospital, like dealing with the coronavirus. So I will tell you from my personal experience, the memes were a lot funnier last week than they were this week. Right. Right. And I think we have to be very aware of, uh, of getting on a soapbox or getting on like the talk about political stances and talking about like opinions and pretending that we're doctors, right? We are just real estate agents. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And also, too, I think there's a lot of just um, we a lot of times we start to address our own fears. Right. We might be concerned about the real estate market. So all of a sudden we start posting market statistics that don't make sense to anyone other than us. Right. Right. We don't. The general public doesn't necessarily care to be informed every single weekend of how many pendings, how many listings. Right. Like who, who are we sending that message to? Right. It's 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 for us. It's for realtors. It's not for them. Like, and, and also, too, if we're going to send that message, like find a way to craft it. So the people that are actually receiving it, which is the general public, because that's what social media is, are going to understand. Because yeah. we talked about meeting them where they are. I promise you, they're not losing unless they have a home on the market or about to put a home on the market. They're not losing sleep at night wondering about the the health of the real estate market right now. They're losing sleep at night because they're trying to figure out how to homeschool their kids or they're losing sleep at night because loved ones are in danger. They're losing sleep at night because they might lose their job. I think it would be a lot more a lot more practical to, to meet them there, to, to to give them uplifting information, right? Yeah. Hit them with positivity, hit them with confidence, but think very much about these messages that we're sending. Wow, that's really powerful. Uh, it does seem pretty simple to put that kind of message out there and feel like you're providing some value because you're easing the the burdens and worries of people. But as you said, they may not even be considering that whatsoever. 
that is just something that is going to make you feel better um, because you've provided that information. You have it. That's really powerful. Uh, yeah, that's that. I love that. Well, I think also too, it's that's what's so powerful about the how are you, right? Because you're allowing them, like you, you're actually asking them what's happening in their world, like you're coming from a place. You know, the first thing that we did on my team is as soon as all of this happened, we addressed all of our clients and we set up a fund, right? It's called the so we're the Lewis Group, so it's the TLG Gives Fund, and we set up this fund to specifically help people because the messaging has to change, right? Because it's not so much about like well. You know, because every communication is bring something of value, right? And it's, it's ask how I can help you and ask how I can help people that you know. So with that being said, we needed something of value to bring to people. And what we came up with was we have this, I want to tell you about this TLG Gives Fund. And who do, so how are you doing? How is your family doing? How is this affecting you? Who do you know that's suffering? Who do you know that's having it worse, worse time than others because we'd love to help them? And through that fund and to be able to be able to guide our conversations and, and meet people where they are. But and also through that fund, we've been able to help several families. We, we paid car notes and we've paid um, uh, utility bills and we've delivered groceries and we've done all these things. But it gives us something to, to actually offer people and bring something of value. And it makes them feel good because giving makes everyone feel better. Right. And we're allowing not only the people like or our team to have the opportunity to give, but we're allowing the people that we talk to an opportunity to give. And that's a far cry from market statistics. Yeah, that's yeah. huge. I think that's one of those things that's really important right now, too, is everyone who's feeling OK with what's happening is also probably in the back of their mind wondering, what can I do? How can I help? What's the one thing that, you know, I can do to make this a little bit easier on somebody? And while your team has set up this fund and you're doing the legwork, you giving someone the opportunity to help with that might make somebody feel just a little bit better that day that they were able to give 10 20 30 bucks they were able to help someone that they might not have ever run across otherwise well right and when we put out a post saying man i had 20 listings go live and they're all under contract money is great life is good but business is fine if there's someone there if there's someone there who just lost their job like they're like sweet that's really cool right like that's i'm i'm really happy that your business is going great right but you're, it has nothing to do with them it has nothing to do with the actual receiver of the message and i think that's important that's right you, you, i think that you can do both i think that you can show people that business is still happening you can give them educational information and market statistics but also i think you can do a, i think we all can do a better job of thinking about these messages and what they're actually saying yeah yeah, I, I, I mean, it goes right back to that same term you said. You meet you meet them where you where they are. Yeah, and it just seems to be a common a common uh, a theme in this presentation. Maybe we'll just change the name of the presentation, David, to meet them where they are. And, All right. Speaking of meeting them where they are, um, we have another opportunity now to meet them where they are by reestablishing our old connections. Now, David, you you know you did mention. Um, some ways of connecting with um, your 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 past fear by simply contacting them and um, meeting them where they are. Can you give me uh, you or Megan? Can you guys give me some other benefits um, of this opportunity to connect with your your people with the right message? Well, I think there's no better time than right now to do that, right? Because if as the market's changing and things are shifting, we it, the need for conversations didn't go down, it went up, right? If you yeah. could accomplish something with 10 conversations before, you pretty much need 100 conversations now to make that happen. So how do you drive more conversations? Like, how do you get the opportunity to speak to more people, right? Mm -hmm. It's, um, you, it's it, the way to do that is to, you know, reestablish those old connections. Like, if you have a past client list of 100 people, make sure you call every single one of them. Right. If you have a database that you haven't reached out to in a long time, like reconnect with them. If you're on social media and you have like those fringe friends, right? Like the people that and I was saying fringe, right? The people on the, the the outskirts of people you actually talk to, the people that you knew in college but haven't talked to in years, like it's probably a good time to shoot them a message. Yeah. To drive those conversations because you know it's like I always say, like we don't sell vacuums, right? Like we we facilitate shelter. Like we people are yeah. always gonna need houses. 
right? And in this time, there's still going to be people that need to sell houses for whatever reasons, right? And they're going to need to move and they're going to need to, to, to downsize and upsize and all of these different things. They're just going to be harder to find because they're because the, the the avenues that we had to generate business before, you know, the open houses, the, um, you know, for sale by owners, like the, the, all of those things are, they're harder to access, right? The, the low hanging fruit. So it's going to require more conversations, but the need is still there. But you're just going to have to talk to a lot more people to get there. So to re-engage and reconnect and talk to these people and just, like I said, ask them how they are. It's the most genuine form of communication that you can have. And I think you can be purposeful about it. Yeah, I think one thing to think about, too, when we use the word connections here, um, we're all used to making a certain number of connections per day or week or month. Now we have an opportunity to connect with people when we call them. These conversations probably aren't going to be those one or two minute conversations that we might have had a month ago. You can spend an hour on a phone with someone who just needs someone to talk to right now and they don't care what you know till they know it till they know that you care and this is an opportunity to show you care call these people and truly connect with them we all have common ground right now whether you're in real estate or you're not whether you're an agent or a client everyone's dealing with this market right now um, with our world right now everyone is dealing with it so it's a connection that you have and you can build on that in a way you might not have been able to again a month ago how are you going to truly connect with these people yeah. How are you going to stay top of mind? Like, how are you going to stay like, like how are you going to reconnect? How are you, you know, uh, in shift, it said uh, Gary Keller says in shift that, you know, we're all on a level playing field right now. Mm -hmm. Everyone, right. The person at the end of this who wins is the person who makes the most connections and gains um, enough mind share to grow it into market share later. Right. To, and you do that by just simply talking to people, right? Like there's no cheat code for real estate. It's, conversation based it's it's effort based and right now it requires more effort than ever but we also um as megan said also earlier we we're also blessed in the sense that we all have something we're going through together meaning that you have something to talk to everybody about yep. everybody is at least in some form or fashion inconvenienced yeah some of, are a lot, some of us are a lot worse than inconvenience but at least all of us are at the smallest level inconvenienced by what's going on in the world right now right mm -hmm. right yeah um now the phone calls we've we've said the word phone calls a couple times and before we could get someone on the phone if we got them on the phone we would say hi this is purely a business call uh you know no time for chit chat that that i use this phrase all the time i was like that was so february of 2020 <laughs> <laughs> literally we can't do that anymore right like it has to be a completely different message are you guys finding that people are are picking up the phone more than they ever did i'll let you answer that one david you're more in the weeds on that mm -hmm. yeah and they want to talk for longer um yeah it's 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 strange like we all have a little bit more time and we all want to connect right um so 100 percent, like people are answering the phone more people are willing to talk more um and, and i honestly i think it's like for what i was saying earlier because we're all united in this thing like we're all like fighting this thing together we're all going through this thing so we're before like you have people that you had nothing to relate to them with like now you do and now they're more open to talk about everything in their life because now you have this common like bond, like you have this thing. So yeah, yeah. I think people are answering the phone a lot more. People have more time. People are on social media a lot more. Yeah. 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 As I've checked in with um, other teams, kind of checking in with the admin on other teams. Hey, what's this look like for you guys? I'm hearing the same that David said that phone calls, people are picking up and they just want to talk. Some of them don't want to talk about this at all. They don't want to talk about what, what's currently going on, but they just want an outlet for a 15 minute conversation about their kids and you know what have you. So I think that's important too to know. I even told my team that recently. Um, when you call me, I don't want to talk about this. I'm over it. I'm talked out. But that's because I spend all day on Zooms and our industry is talking about this like crazy. But in a friend group, we're not talking about that 24 seven. So expect also that everyone you talk to doesn't want to talk about this. Maybe they're talked out on COVID. They just want to talk about themselves. That's, yeah. that's a very real possibility right now. You could literally be the highlight of their day, mm -hmm. you know, which is awesome. 
I got on a Zoom call with some coworkers the other day, and I don't I don't think we ever laughed that much in person as we did you know, on that call. So I, I agree with you, Megan, that it's it's a great time to reconnect with people in the in the most uh, entertaining of ways and have fun with them um, and, and enjoy it. And and I love what you said earlier, David, and I hope people really took heart to that. Um, is that a uh, a joke or some humor around this? may not be um, accepted by everyone around because people might actually be dealing with it directly. And I, that's such an important message. And I, I uh, remember having that conversation when we talked earlier uh, about this session and that hit me really hard. So I've been very cautious about how I manage and respond to that. So yeah, thank you, it's good stuff. All right, now let's look at our, uh, I'm getting some feedback. Okay, we're, we're back. All right, super. Let's talk about making new connections. So this is something that uh, we as agents uh, and I, and I've heard other agents dealing with, um, in, in how do I continue to lead generate? How do I continue to build my funnel? Um, if I can't have the open houses, if I can't uh, walk around and pass out business cards, I used to go to the grocery store. That was like my main place to be and I can barely get in there. So. Can we talk a little bit about making these new connections? David, I'll start with you on the on the team side. Sure, the, this is the thing that I'm the most excited about, right? The, the opportunity in all of this, and not the opportunity to capitalize on people's hardships, but the opportunity to grow like what we have and to grow that, that mind share. Um, I told you, yeah. you guys, the first thing that we did was we established the TLG Gives Fund, right? The second thing we did is we started a separate Facebook page, yeah. right? And it's a group on Facebook and it's called the TLG community, right? We don't post, we do not post anything about real estate in that group. Oh. It's contest. It's, um, it's uh, a place for us to talk about the TLG fund. It's health, five day health challenges. It's live yoga classes. It's um, children's books being read. It's uh, CrossFit instructors doing at home workouts, all live, uh, staging and design classes, science experiments, um, wine events, uh, cooking classes. It's it's all of these things that are being broadcast like from this group page. And the reason we made it number one separate from our, because we have a business page, is that mm -hmm. we wanted to make new connections. So we have almost a thousand people who have joined this in the past couple of weeks. And most of them we weren't connected to before. We didn't know, we, some of them we knew, and but some of them are old connections. Some of them are, but a lot of them are new. Um, and if anybody's listening to this, they can email me or find me on Facebook and I'm happy to add you to this group so you can take away from everything that we're doing. But this group specifically is about the positivity, right? It's everything. Um, and some things that have kind of happened with this is, you know, if we're hurting right now in our business, small or local businesses are hurting even more. Oh, yeah. Restaurants, um, gyms, um, entertainment venues, uh, bookstores, like these things. So one thing that we've been very purposeful about with this is collaborating with local businesses. So these local businesses are allowing us to, a lot of times we share our databases. So if they have a great social media presence, like we get the opportunity to get access to their database, they get out there to get access to ours and we showcase their needs, right? We showcase the things that they have, the things that they're offering. We give them an opportunity to, um, to help them in a time of need. And, and if you guys think agents are all about referrals, no one understands referrals at a high level like someone who struggles and owns a local business. Yep. And at the end of the day, they are always going to remember the Lewis Group for being the group that reached out to them to ask how they are, what's their biggest need, and for us to find a way to, to, to together to collaborate and help them in a time of need. Um, so this this TLG community page has been an absolute success for helping us make new connections of people that we don't know um, or we didn't know. We didn't have the opportunity to meet before. And it's a thousand people that, you know, and it's, we don't, it's non real estate related, but it doesn't mean that they don't understand that we're a real estate team. Right. And that we do real estate business. We are gaining mind share. Right. Yeah. Um, when new agents come on the team in the regular world and they go, well, I don't have a sphere, right? Or my sphere is small or my sphere is unqualified to buy. Well, yeah. what do you do when your sphere is bad, right? You build a new sphere, right? You grow your existing sphere and you have to think outside the box. 
Um, and there's one way to do that, and that's to join other people's groups and try to gain mind share where other people have it. Or we can step outside the box and create something of our own. You know what I see what you've done, David? I, visually, I see that you have created a uh, a neighborhood um, a neighborhood bazaar um, or a neighborhood um, uh, whatever you call uh, a market. You've created a neighborhood market because now you go to one place and you walk around this market and you're able to find all of these different vendors that have rented space in your uh, in your area and um, that that to me is huge and, and then you get to gain the contacts that those vendors are are, are are collecting that's that's huge because I I know on our we have a community page I have to go to four or five different places to see who's doing what we could continue to drive people to go to one place for everything and then you probably gonna have vendors knocking down your door to you know, you're approaching people they might be approaching you now Correct. And it's all about our motivation, right? And our motivation is bringing something of value. Wow. And in these groups where they come and, and like you can smell a filter a long ways away, right? You can smell the reason for the group, right? And our reason for the group is nothing more than to bring people together in a hard time. Yeah. And obviously, if it helps us build our business, that's amazing, right? But there's nothing about that on our page. Like that's the, it's, it's the fact, right? It's the it's the same reason that we're backing up our how are you conversations by a, having a fund that helps people out because we actually care, right? And that's part of our mission and vision. So like the, it, it it's a great outlet and also too it gives us something to talk about. He took all the words out of my mouth. I'm just mad now because I don't have anything positive to contribute. <laughs> no, you, and it's funny you literally hit on the two main topics I had, which is our opportunity for business to business, um, social yeah. media, and then the other one is your immediate neighborhood. So I'm seeing really cool things just happening in my own small neighborhood where neighbors are reaching out and saying, hey, if your kids are out of school right now and they're not getting those school meals, here's where they can go get them. Or if you can't get to them, can we pick them up for you? I'm seeing bear hunts where people are putting teddy bears in their windows. So when you're out walking because you can't do anything else at night, your kids have something to look for and they're counting those. I've seen some really cool, um, I want to say treasure hunt, but that's not the word I'm looking for. Um, but scavenger people are putting hunt. out this, I, what's that? Scavenger hunt. That's the one. Thank you. Scavenger. <laughs> but putting out, you know, find um, something pink, find whatever it is, and then send us your pictures. Um, it's giving you something to do, something to get your mind off what's going on, especially those people with kids. I think they're really struggling with this. Um, not necessarily more than anyone else, just in a different way. And so it's just getting your mind off some things. And then you get to help local businesses because when someone wins that scavenger hunt, you say, okay, we're going to give you a $20 gift card to this local coffee shop or this local sandwich shop, whatever it is. We get to support the businesses in those ways too, because these small local businesses, they need us spending money. You know, all yeah. the restaurants here can still operate. There's really not many in our area that have decided to shut down either for now or forever. Um, but what a great way that, that it becomes a win-win. You can help that business and help your clients and those other people at the same time um, and make connections there. So I think that's that's been a really cool thing I've seen. And just like David has his fund, I'm seeing so many people starting those options. Um, Jeff Glover in Michigan, you know, they they picked up lunch for a series of hospitals last week and delivered lunch to all these nurses and doctors who are in the trenches. You know, what can you do that's giving back to whoever it is? Um, Social media is huge. Again, those groups where you can give them something to do, something of value. I probably wouldn't have done yoga a month ago, but now there's times I've been like, oh my God, what can I do? And all right, David, let's do some yoga. Why not? You know, right. people are trying things right now. They're looking for hobbies. They're looking for something to pass the time. And that's amazing. I think that, I mean, that right there, if someone's not starting something like that, that's a missed opportunity in my, my opinion. I would say, yeah, if you guys uh, are taking anything away from this, this has to be one of them, <laughs> uh, having a, a neighborhood page or even a place that people can go. You could do a website. You could create a, um, uh, you could add a page to your own site. I, I like what David's doing, though. He's separating it from real estate so that everybody gains and it doesn't seem like it's um, 
specific for one group or one company? So I, I think it's important to note that if you're not, so everything has changed, right? Like the world is changing, like things have changed in a pretty dramatic way. And if you're doing the same thing that you were doing the week before, you're behind, right? Yep. Like if you yep. were doing this three weeks ago when all this started in Georgia, right? If you're doing the same, if your activities are exactly the same as they were before, yep. you're behind, right? And if you, yes. and if you're doing less than you're doing before, like you are losing in a big way. And the reason I say yep. that is because Teams like the Lewis Group and teams like all, I'm, I'm using me as or uh, us as an example, but teams all over the country are gaining ground during this time period. And if we're gaining ground, if you're sitting on your couch, you're losing ground. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's important to think about that. And I don't mean to say that like, but we're being proactive, like we're doing things. And these are simple things that anybody could do. And all I'm just I'm, I'm challenging people to change their thoughts on a little bit and just giving them the nudge to say like, you got to get off your butt and do something or you will lose business during this time period while other people are gaining. And I think it's important to have that perspective when you think about this, because this is this is where people this is where people rise to the top, right? This is this is where things happen. Yeah. yeah. I was not in real estate in the last shift. Um, I don't even really remember a lot about it. You know, that in 08, um, just purely based on my age, honestly, it wasn't I wasn't at a point where it affected me like it would have someone who was in their 40s at the time. Um, what I'm seeing, though, is. In in the book shift, I'm seeing where we talk about how your efforts are going to have to majorly increase to maybe not even get the same level of activity. I mean, you may be even getting slightly lower than you were before. Your efforts have to increase like crazy right now. Um, and I'm seeing all of these things in this book that I'm reading back through every single morning, um, how it all just makes sense. And we talk about how you have to have a foundation before you get creative. Now's your time to get creative, people. If you've got that foundation and you're trying to make sure that you stay top of mind, that fund is creative. That Facebook page is creative. You've still got all the foundation there. You're still calling and reaching out to people and doing those true lead generation activities, but you're also being creative and giving people something that they really need right now. And if you're not doing it, someone else is. Yeah, creative. Uh, I love that because um, creativity can get results, right? And that's what you're saying is that you have to uh, be creative and, Right now, there's you know the the learning from others is vital, yeah. Uh, because there's a lot of people already doing this stuff, and if you know you, you can you can get creative in this environment, and we're going to see what what turns out of it. Um, yeah. Things like virtual open houses, people have been doing that for a long time. We just uh, didn't accept it. I think as an industry as as an option. And now we're finding sellers are loving it, buyers are loving it. You know, it's it actually is going to be an option. So if you're not adding to your resume now that you are a virtual buying specialist, a virtual selling specialist, uh, you need to get those skills uh, acquired so that you can add that to your resume. That in itself is is shifting. That's um, um, doing things different, right, David? If you don't, you, you that may not have even mattered uh, three weeks ago, but now right. it's it's going to be a big deal. Right. And and I think we should ask ourselves, too, like, you know, if you're just like, what, like what's different, like what's separating us from everybody else? You know, what are we going to do that's different? Because I think right now when the business is harder to come by, like the the more you can separate yourself apart and do something different, the, the, the greatest chance you have of getting access to these shrinking number of people who are going to want to do real estate transactions. Yeah. Amen to that. Yeah. All right, that's excellent. Okay, so um, I don't know, man. I don't know how we could get. Can we get any better <laughs> ideas on how to connect? We just covered a lot of them. I mean, we are just killing right now. It's totally stealing my thunder. Uh, no, but this is this is good. I mean, there are there are ways that we've you know we've talked about ways of connecting with people that you know, uh, ways of connecting with people that you don't know, right? People that um, you're currently working with, your your current clients, your current buyers. Um, what are what are some other thoughts on 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 this on uh, how to connect? Think outside the box. Mm -hmm. 
connect with people that you probably wouldn't have before. Um, connect with the people that you would have before, right? Don't forget about like just it's it's local businesses. It's um, it's people who are uh, facing hardships. It's people that aren't facing hardships. It's it, like we have this uniting thing to talk about to anybody and like let's not waste this because in a month we might not have it. You can't in a month or two months or three months you might not be able to call people and go. Hey man, you remember how tough it was when the coronavirus was around? That right. wouldn't be a, wouldn't be a weird conversation, <laughs> right? But now it's very relevant, and it's a thing that can go. Hey, how are you? Like, how's this affecting you guys? Like, this yeah. is the uniting thing that we have. Like, do not waste it. You know, uh, people always default to man, the weather, right? Or, wish it would stop raining or you know like man it's sunny outside right like because in the reason that we do that in general like conversations is because it's the one thing that everyone it's the universal understanding right yeah. we now have a better one we now right. have a bigger one and we mm -hmm. now have something that's attached to emotion and attached to opportunity and attached to circumstance and it would be an absolute waste to not talk to as many people as possible about it which is the overall driving force of real estate success in the first place Nothing's changed. The way that we'll succeed now is the way that we succeeded before, right? It's still conversation driven. We just got to make sure we're having the connections. Yeah. yeah. I think there's an opportunity here too. Um, obviously in March, we had millions of people filing for unemployment. I mean, unbelievable numbers. And for those teams or those agents who have really set themselves up for what set themselves up for success and have months or years of reserves in the bank, maybe you have an opportunity to help someone directly. And maybe it's, you know, doing something on your real estate team. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's through the fund. Maybe it's having them help with some transactions. It can look a lot of different ways, but um, maybe that's one of the ways you connect is you have something to offer in terms of work or compensation somehow. Um, but also, you know, I'm friends with a number of hairstylists. I, I don't know why, but I have a lot of friends who are hairstylists. Mm -hmm. And um, I saw something scroll across my timeline on Facebook last week about a, a fund specifically for hairstylists where they can go and get, you know, a loan that doesn't have to be paid back. And so I found all my hairstylist friends and just shot that over to them and said, you know, just in case this is something that could help you. It probably came up on their feed, but maybe not. You know, if there's one person who was able to to apply for that because they're completely, you know, that's not essential. They're completely shut down and they still have families at home. So if that's one person who got 500 bucks, you know, whatever that looked like, I feel like I can help. So maybe it's that finding these ways to help people who are unemployed, whether they're in a trade that you know something about um, or you just can offer them, you know, 10, 15 hours of work to do something. We, you know, if we've set ourselves up well, we've probably got something that we can leverage out to someone. Of course, that's right. on my mind because I'm in the business of leverage. But, you know, there's always something that that you can have someone help you do. Set yourself up. Yeah. And I like when you started this, Megan, you said, you know, if you're going to ask somebody if they need help, be ready for an answer and right. be ready to help. So uh, what you're saying is that don't do this as an idea just because it's a good idea. Do this because it's it's something that is important to you um, and it's something that you're gonna you're gonna come do coming out of contribution because you can't just offer right. and not and not uh, fulfill. Exactly. Exactly. That's that was a big statement. All right. Um, so I asked you all to, uh, we get, I mean, I know I fulfilled my promise by bringing two rock star panelists. You guys did an amazing job. Thank you very much for uh, the information that you provided to this audience. And I'm going to ask you guys uh, your promise. Let's see if you can stick with your side. Tell me a couple of things that you guys took away from uh, this call. And while I'm waiting for that information, um, I'm going to have you all, uh, I want to remind you, I sent you uh, a chat that uh, with the name Shift. That's the book that we've been talking about. Uh, that is written by Gary Keller and Jay Papathon. I think I have it sitting uh, right over there in my desk. I'm sure David has it really close by as Megan does. Yeah. Um, that's a great book for you to read. It's uh, an amazing opportunity. That's it. That's what it looks like right there. Thank you, David. So um, be sure to go find that in your local bookstore. I think you can even find it in Audible. Um, get shift. It's it's a it's a game changer. And you know what's interesting? It just hasn't changed, has it? 
from the time it was written in 2008 to, to now. It's, it's right. really relevant. And I think that's vital, as is a millionaire real estate agent, because it does talk about those relationships. I mean, let's not forget, um, David, you said it in, in a couple of different ways. We are in the relationship business, right? We're um, not always in the, not lead generation business. We're in the lead in the in the relationship business. And if we're not maintaining and creating our relationships, then we're not helping our business. And that's what I feel like those messages that we talked about today. Um, are going to do. Any last minute thoughts for our audience uh, from uh, David and Megan? Megan, I'll start with you. Uh, thank you again for, for being here. Yeah, of course. Um, I just wanted to say there were two things from David that I took away. Um, the first was mentioning we have to be careful about what we're putting out right now and who we're marketing to or who we're talking to. Um, yeah again, not everyone does care about those numbers. That's so true. And you have to think about what you're putting out right now. Are you serving yourself and making yourself feel better or your industry? Or are you putting stuff out that's benefiting the public, the people that are consuming these messages? Um, and the other, David said, we have the opportunity to bring something of value. Um, again, I'm with KW, so I'm used to positive talk. Um, it's something that we try to focus really heavy on. And we can view this as a problem. We can view this as a negative. There's a lot of ways we can look at this or we can turn it around and view this as an opportunity because there's a lot of a lot of opportunity in this business wise, personal wise. I mean, obviously we see families coming together. Um, I've never seen so many people out walking in the neighborhood or on a greenway. I mean, it is unbelievable yes. the families I'm seeing. Today. So find the opportunity in this. Yes, agreed. Uh, and not, that's I, I hear you saying don't, don't just create content for content's sake, right? Right. So unnecessary. Yep. Cool. David. Man, last that's, a hard one. One. that's a hard yeah, one to find for sure. Um, so I think when all this started happening, um, you know, we wanted to get into action really fast. And we, we asked ourselves a pretty simple question. And, you know, like my director of operations, Denise, the leadership team, the uh, I can't say enough about the amazing agents like on our team who are really putting in the effort. Right. And really making things um, happen. But we asked ourselves a question is at the end of this situation, whether it be one week, two weeks, 10 months, three months, whatever, it's out of our control. Who did we want to be? Well, what was the story that we wanted to tell at the end of it, right? How did we show up? Did we take market share? Did we take mind share? Did we sit on our butts? Did we take a vacation? Did we help people, right? And I think if we all use that filter, the who do we want to be? What story do we want to be able to tell at the end of this when we talk about this in the future? If it's something where we can keep our head held like really high, is it something we're proud of? Is it something we're embarrassed about? Did we do nothing? Did we do something, right? And I think that's a really important takeaway, right? Because there's no, how you show up now is going to be really important for the future. And I think we should take some uh, accountability around that and like ask ourselves, you know, who exactly did we want to, do we want to tell people that we were in this situation and to be proud of it. And I think that we can honestly say that the things that we've done, like I'm pretty freaking proud of. Yeah. That's so good. How do I want to show up? That's what I'm walking away from this with. How do I want to show up? Yeah. Who, who do I want to be is what I'm walking away with. And I think I want to be David Lewis when this is all <laughs> yeah. I want to be like David. That's a really great. Um, now, you guys notice our, uh, on the screen right now, I have the rest of our sessions that we're going to have um, throughout the rest of the month. So take a look at these. David, you're going to be my guest on the virtual um, um, become virtual expertise. And he's going to talk a lot more about how to use um, those things that you're doing now, your expert, um, those things that you're an expert in, and, and come from contribution so that you can help provide more information for people and, of course, bring yourself uh, more business in the end, right? Right. So take a look at those. I'm going to let those scroll through. I want to thank you both again so very much for your time, and let's give them a big round of applause, everyone. Uh, we are providing you this because it's important that all of us succeed uh, in this business, and we all want to succeed together. So please continue to join us on this uh, from the rest of the Brevity team and uh, myself, Megan, David, uh, Bob Stewart. We want to thank you all for being here and being a part of today's presentation. Thanks again, you all. We'll see you next time. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye.